How's everyone doing? Good? Enjoying the conference so far? See a lot of uh, friendly faces in the audience and a lot of uh, new faces, which is great. I appreciate you coming out. I know you have a, a number of options, a number of different sessions you could choose from, and you decided to choose this one. And so, therefore, I'm committed to making sure that I use this time, your valuable time, as effectively as possible. Um, those of you that know me, my name is Amir, Amir Zvani. I am the co-founder of Dealeron. And uh, I'll be speaking to you today about advanced website conversion. We're going to talk today about the science behind website conversion. And we're going to get pretty um, technical when it comes to analyzing the human brain and why we, how we process incoming information and why we make the decisions we make both on and offline. And so the, the theme of this presentation is going to really be uh, how to influence online behavior. And that's the goal of the presentation. But my goal as a speaker today is to influence your behavior when you go back to the dealership. Now, if anyone's ever sat in one of my sessions before, you might know that I have been speaking at these automotive conferences for the last five years, and I've probably given about 50 different presentations. But this is the only topic I've ever spoke on. So I'm going to continue to speak on this topic and only this topic until more than 1% of the dealer population starts to incorporate some of these proven techniques and principles into their day-to-day -day activities when they're designing and updating content on their websites. So, um, you know, I'm really passionate about this information, but I'd really love to move on to something else. So please, please, <laughs> do me this favor and... Uh, I think we can come back in about 10 years. <laughs> well, we want to get to 5%. Maybe the top 10% of the dealers out there, if you can commit to some of these principles, you will see a huge lift in your online performance. So, just a little bit about me. I've been in automotive marketing for 10 years, and prior to that, 10 years in uh, retail automotive management. I've worked for companies like Van Tile, Dar Cars, and a uh, number of held every position in a dealership possible. And, um, you know, I've been out of school for now 20 years. So if I'm not doing online marketing or I'm not selling cars, there's nothing I'm qualified to do. So uh, my business is located in Washington, D.C. Dealeron is a automotive website provider. We're a digital media agency also, kind of a, a boutique environment. We're very hands-on with our customers and we uh, help the dealer conduct a lot of the things that we're talking about today. And the key word there is help. Uh, it's really going to be up to you to execute. Um, and uh, these are just a couple of the awards uh, that my company has been recognized for. And I don't throw these up here for any other reason, but just to draw your attention to one of them. There's a digital dealer website excellence award that's given out every conference. Now, this is really the one award that I really hold true and dear to my heart because it's a strictly data-driven award. It's, uh, it's, it's conducted through a company called Datium, which many of you may be familiar with, uh, and they put a unique analytical code on over 13,000 automotive web websites nationwide, and they aggregate all this information, and then based upon the dealer's performance, mainly in the area of conversion and some really other important categories, they report back to Digital Dealer whose websites, which website providers are performing at the highest level, and it really evens the playing field. So my biggest honor in coming here today is to accept the award again four years in a row. So the things that we're going to talk to you about today are techniques and case studies that those dealerships that were recognized in these awards are doing today. And the reason I'm apprehensive about sharing these techniques with you, it's twofold. One, selfishly, I'm afraid you're going to take this back to your existing website provider and basically take all my 10 years of research and hard work and duplicate them. But um, on a serious note, that's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that you're going to actually duplicate these techniques without testing them. And what I'm going to show you today, and the theme about this whole presentation is that nothing that I'm going to show you will work in your dealership unless you test it. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to test and some simple tools that you can purchase for less than $50 that will allow you to conduct your own tests each and every week. All right. Before we get into a presentation about conversion, I just want to define to you my interpretation of the word conversion for the sake of this presentation. And all we're going to simply do today is talk about how many of these guys come to your website and become those guys. 
And by those guys, all I mean is whatever your goal is, if your goal is to drive more foot traffic, then your conversion ratio is gonna be visitor to show ratio. If your conversion goal is to generate more leads, it's gonna be visitor to lead ratio. For scientific purposes, and for the, the tracking data that I have across 800 dealership websites, I'm gonna to present to you visitor to lead conversion ratio. For, for the rest of this presentation, we talk about conversion rate, simply the number of unique visitors that come to your website, divided by the number of form submissions. Fair enough? Okay. Now, that shouldn't be your main focal point when measuring conversion. Those are just macro conversions, phone calls, lead form submissions. The micro conversions are really the activity that take place on your website that drive the macro conversions. And these are the, the basically the secret sauce to how to raise your conversion rate. If you really pay attention to things like VDP views, how many people hit your vehicle details page, how many people come to your home page and go into an inventory search, those are, those are SRP views. And then a really good indication, indicator of intent is how many people go and click on your, ma your maps and directions or your hours. These are people that probably are interested in visiting your dealership at some point. We wanna see where these people came from and how they're behaving on your website. And then for those people here in, in, involved in fixed operations, coupon prints are a really good indicator of fixed operation conversions that could take place um, within a very short time frame. So these are basically micro conversions are the small incremental activities that lead up to a conversion and macro conversions are those phone calls and those form submissions. All right. So, I wanna get a little audience participation, make this interactive, make it fun. I don't wanna just be presenting the entire time because I can see there's a lot of smart people in here and you probably have some really good um, input to give on this topic. But if I could, can I just see a show of hands or, or you can just scream out if you like, what do you guys think the average conversion ratio is on a dealership website today? Three, two. Okay, well according to Datium, that company that has the analytic code on all those thousands of websites, the data we subscribed from them showed that last year, the average conversion rate on a dealership website was 1.67%. So less than 2% of all those expensive, unique visitors that you work so hard to drive to your website are going to be completing a form. And now I'm, I'm talking about a, a vehicle inquiry, okay? So less than 2%. The bad news is that that's a lot of wasted money on advertising. It's a lot of effort to drive these people to your website to only have 98% of them leave without leaving you some information for you to follow up with. The good news is you can't get much worse than 2%. So there's nowhere to go but up, all right? Now, that's the average conversion ratio. We also identified that in this network of 30, 000, uh, 13,000 dealers, there was about 40 dealers sprinkled all around the United States selling all different brands and different geographic markets that were doing four times that on their website. And so what we did along with Datium is, is, is study some of the differences in these websites and compare them to the websites that were doing the 2% and try to formulate some, some decisions on what these dealerships are doing differently from those dealerships. Some of the things were very obvious, the other ones took a lot of analysis and we still don't know why. But I wanna just point out a couple of those dealerships that have been recognized publicly, um, and their stats have been documented month in and month out, and they're doing almost 8% conversion consistently each month. And in this presentation, we're gonna look at some of those stores, and look at some of their techniques, and then talk about what you can do with that information. All right, again, our data shows that the average automotive website gets about 4,000 unique visitors per month. Okay, does that sound about right to everyone in this room? I'm sure we've got some here that are on the very high side of that and some on the lower side, but 4,000 unique visitors per month. And NADA tells us that as dealers, we are closing 15% of our website leads. All right, so I'm gonna break down some simple math for you. At 2% conversion on 4,000 unique visitors, the average dealer website is responsible for 12 website car deals. 12 web car deals from your website per month on 4,000 4, uniques and 2% conversion. So if you close those leads at 15%, you'll see 12 car deals out of that. Now some of these other dealerships that are converting at 8%, 
They're driving the same 4,000 visitors to their website, but because they're converting at 8% instead of 2%, and they're still closing 15%, they're getting 48 car deals from the same investment as all the other dealerships who are converting at 2%. And the reason why I'm breaking it down into dollars and cents and these, you know, the, the, these different equations is because I want to I want to kind of reach out to you and say there's a huge business case to be made on why you should really focus on your conversion rate and do not take the limitations of your website provider, the limitations of your own knowledge and experience with optimizing a website and accept that 2% is good enough when it's clearly obvious that there's dealers out there that can do four times that. And if you do that, the end result could be an extra 36 car deals per month on average. All right, so now we're gonna look at how to accomplish these type of results and I'm gonna give you my personal recommendations and I hope that more than 1% of you will consider taking these back to your dealerships, especially when I show you how easy it is. All right, so most companies right now, and this is outside of automotive, are conducting less than two tests on their website per month, okay? So um, that's not very good. So I'm not gonna study most companies out there. In my opinion, in studying conversion rates in all different industries, I think the best designed, highest converting website that I've ever come across is amazon.com. It's the smartest, most intuitive website that I've ever visited. Amazon.com is also the company that invented A-B split testing 16 years ago. They conduct today, after numerous thousands upon thousands of tests that they've conducted, today they're still doing 200 new tests per month. So my goal, my mission, I will keep giving the same exact presentations at these same exact conferences. My goal is to get dealers to consider the possibility of conducting two tests per month on their own website. As internet managers and marketing directors, we're constantly updating content on our websites. We're constantly adding new banners, new specials. We're changing colors, themes. You know, we got a 4th of July sale. We got so many different opportunities to update our homepage, our VDPs, our, our search inventory pages. Every time we update our website, we're impacting our conversion rate. Conversion is either going down or it's going up, but we never know which one it is. We just keep adding content, removing content, and assuming that we're doing something positive because there's activity being you know, updated on our website. And that's not effective optimization. So, today $92 is being spent on driving traffic to every $1 spent on optimization. That's across the board. Amazon.com has got this down to just $20 in traffic to every $1 spent in optimi optimizing the website traffic. So I'd like to see, as an, uh, as, a, as an industry, us get closer to that $20 uh, to every $1 we spend on traffic. All right, so a lot of us have probably read and seen some facts on um, calls to action and colors and the impact that calls to action have on conversion rate and changing the colors of different calls to actions. So we're gonna look at some of these different myths and we're gonna try to determine which one of these are worth testing and which ones aren't. How many here, have heard that green buttons convert better than any other color. Green means go, right? Are your calls to action green though? Green is the color of money. So psychologically in our brains, we see green, we think money, we think go. That should mean that all of our calls to action should be green. It's a no brainer. So we tested that and we wanted to determine the validity of green. And we found that Sometimes green calls to actions converted better than other colors, and sometimes they didn't. So if you go back to your dealership right now and blindly change all your calls to actions to green, you'll have no idea whether you had any positive or negative impact unless you're doing A-B testing. All right, now I've also heard from customers that call into my support line at Dealeron and they wanna change all their submit buttons that are typically red they want, to, they want to change those to different colors because they were told that red means danger, red means stop. I don't want to have a red call to action. That's not you know, effective. We found that maybe red converts better and maybe it doesn't. So basically what I'm trying to get at is we can't believe any of these different myths unless we test them for ourselves. And orange is a very popular call to action color. We've tested that as well and sometimes that converted better and sometimes it didn't. But the one thing I can tell you that will have an immediate impact, and you don't even have to test this one, is if you minimize the number of form fields on your lead forms, you will see a nice lift in conversion. 
So if you don't do anything else that I'm gonna show you today or don't follow any of my recommendations, just go back to your dealership and remove one unnecessary form field from your lead forms, okay? And this is what I'm talking about is name, email, phone. In my opinion, you don't need anything more than those three to be able to follow up with a customer. Any additional field of information you ask for, best time to contact you, shopping status, you know, anything else, those will each reduce your conversion rate by 8%, okay? There is one form field I've seen that actually lifts conversion rate when you add it to name, email, and phone. Anyone wanna take a guess at what that might be? What's that? Text? Like, like uh, no, not text, but that's, that's a good one to test. It's actually comments. It turns out that people want the ability to free form information about specific equipment they're looking for or when, how to contact them or not contact them, so on and so forth. So if you're not doing more, if you're doing anything more than name, email, phone, and um, comments, you're costing yourself potential conversion opportunities. Are these required or just available options? These are just available. Um, if you, we know we've tested putting requiring and not requiring, and we've just seen very, the data's very fuzzy there. Um, if, you know, you gotta really look at, if, he, if you require a phone number, you're just gonna get a bunch of fake phone numbers. So you can't force people into doing anything. Um, so, we talked a lot about testing and why it's so important. So let me just define for you real quickly what I mean by A-B testing. All right, I'm gonna create a real simple diagram. So these are your website visitors, and the control is gonna be your website as it stands right now. And then with this really simple piece of software, and there's some really great ones outside of our industry that are available for literally $50 a month. You take a little snippet of code from the software and you place it on your website. And that gives you the ability, without any programming, without any design skills, without any knowledge of HTML, to go in and start tinkering with your website and changing call to action colors and verbiage and adding graphics and removing graphics and moving widgets from left to right, which makes a tremendous amount of difference and allows you to do all these little updates without actually changing any code on your website whatsoever. These softwares give you the ability to do that simply through dragging and dropping. If I wanna do a split test on a search widget, whether it performs better on the right-hand side of my, my screen versus my left-hand side, I would log into the software, click, drag, drop, done, A-B test completed. So, traffic comes to your website, 50% of your visitors see your website as it exists today, the other 50% will see the new variation, whatever small incremental change that you made. And then the software system will do all the work, it will tabulate the performance, the impact, the results of the two variations, and submit back to you an email or a report that says, you have now reached statistical significance. You've had a significant, you've had a substantial enough, uh, uh, you've reached enough traffic to your website for us to be able to definitively say that this variation outperformed this one. And it should be at that point, you call your website provider and say, can you please reconfigure my website or redesign my website so that it displays this way? And if they give you any crap about it, Send them the report and say, I've got scientific data to indicate a significant improve in my website's performance if you move this from the left to the right. And I promise you, if my dealers would call my support line and they had these kind of reports and this type of information, I would be so grateful and so willing to update my website because they're just making us better. The problem is, the phone calls I get is, you know, my GM was at a 20 group meeting and then, and I have to now redesign and program his website because of something that has no uh, scientific validity. Yes? Believe it or not, you can. You can. You gotta go buy these third-party softwares and there's, there's, there's even some free ones. Um, Google makes a free one. It's not my favorite. I, I would prefer to spend a little bit of money and get a really good one. But Google's, it's called Google Content Experiments. It was formerly called Website Optimizer. And you can actually drop the code onto COBOL or dealer.com and conduct your own split test. You're gonna drive them crazy with this, but it's what for your own good. Um, I like a company called Visual Website Optimizer. Great technology, the support is overseas, so that can be a little bit um, uh, challenging sometimes, but it's only 50 bucks a month and it's full featured. It can do anything. Uh, probably Hindi or Bengali or something. No, they speak English. But, um, you know, it's just a little bit slow sometimes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so what you're going to do is you're going to buy this software on your own or get a free version from Google, drop the code on your dealer.com site, start moving stuff around within the software, not on your website platform. And then once you get results and you reach statistical significance, then you're going to go to dealer.com and say, make my website look like this. And what I'm not talking about radical redesigns here. I'm talking about some very granular, some very specific minor optimizations. But you do one this week, and then you get some results. And you do another one next week. Next thing you know, maybe in six months, you have a pretty significantly different looking website, but it was all very iterative. All right, so the hardest challenge. So now you know how cheap the software is. You know where to buy it. You know where to get it for free. You know that. Um, you know, how important it is to test the different updates you make on your website. The hard thing is figuring out what to take, what to test, okay? And the best, most um, you know, successful marketers in the world, they look inside the human brain for inspiration on what to test. And what I mean by that is that they look at the, the, the conscious mind, and this, this iceberg that I put up here is basically a graphical representation of our brain. If you look at this iceberg, only 5% of this iceberg is above water, is the part of the iceberg that you can see. 95% of this, percent of this ice, iceberg is below water, okay? Just like our brains, only 5% of our brains is responsible for conscious thought. 95% of all of our brain activity is all subconscious. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you make breakfast, you drive to work. These are all routine things that we do daily using the subconscious part of our brain. And so in order to be able to figure out what to test, we gotta tap into that 5% of the brain that's the part of the brain that processes incoming information, that rationalizes thought, plans ahead, and is the decision maker inside of the brain. And that part of the brain is called the reptilian brain. And the brain can actually be broken down into three different brains. And I'm just gonna talk about them real quickly. I'm not gonna get too technical, but it's really important that you understand that the new brain is the 5% of the brain that we talked about. This is the part we wanna tap into. It's actually called the neocortex. The middle brain is your limbic system. This part of the brain controls all of your emotions and your gut feelings, the, thing, the part of your brain that feels. The reptilian brain which takes input from your neocortex and your limbic system and actually makes the final decision on what you're gonna do and not do, this is the part of the brain we need to learn how to stimulate. And there's got five very distinct characteristics which you can actually optimize your website around. All right, this is the part where it gets really fun. So, how do we stimulate the reptilian brain? One is understand that it's extremely self-centered. This brain, part of our brain has not changed in over 100 million years. We share this part of our brain with reptiles. So it is only it's only concerned with its own survival. Anything that does not affect its own survival is of no interest, so it's all about me, me, me. What's in it for me? Any time and effort you spend on your website talking about anything other than what concerns the reptilian brain, which is their own well-being and survival, is gonna be a distraction to this brain. It's not gonna comprehend, it's not gonna pay attention to it. So think about special offers, incentives, things that benefit the consumer specifically and not focus on how great you are as a dealership. It's also extremely important that it can only recognize contrast. All right, so it sees black, it sees white, it sees big, it sees small. And that's where calls to action come in. The most effective calls to action have huge contrast between what's on the page and off the page. So they gotta be very obvious, they gotta be very clear, they have to be placed in places where the reptilian brain can easily identify them and they have to be very, very obvious. When we talked about all those different color combinations and tests that we did, one of the reasons why the red didn't work very well in the test that we did is we were testing red call to action on Toyota websites. Most of the Toyota website's color palette is red. So when we put our red call to action there, it didn't have contrast. So it didn't resonate with the reptilian brain. So on sites that have a lot of red, we recommend a green call to action. Sites that have a lot of green, put a red call to action. So contrast is critical for the reptilian brain. It also likes things that are tangible. That means that they're, they're things that are easily recognizable and they're friendly and they're familiar. So if a guy is going and searching five different dealership websites and all of them have their navigation across the top 
And they all say, search new vehicles, search used vehicles. And all of a sudden, you decide, I'm going to test having my navigation on the right-hand side, and I'm going to say, you know, find inventory or some, you know, unrecognizable or unfamiliar uh, website architecture. That's going to throw the reptilian brain off. It's going to come to a website that typically follows a certain convention, and all of a sudden, you've done a radical change that's unfamiliar, and that person's going to bounce, and the reptilian brain's going to get confused. It also only pays attention to content that's at the very beginning of the, t of the um, text, text that's at the very beginning of the site and at the very end. So put your most important content at the top and then reinforce it at the bottom. And it's extremely visual and emotional. It responds to pictures of human beings. It responds to video. It responds to pictures of babies. These are all things that trigger emotions within our brain. It triggers the limbic system. So anything you can do to have an emotional attachment with the consumer will have a big impact on influencing the reptilian brain. All right, so now that we've talked about where to look for inspiration on what to test and what are the different parts of the brain that we need to trigger in order to increase conversion, let's look at some case studies of tests that we've ran over the last six or seven months that we have used some of these principles and we've seen some pretty good lifts. All right, I'm gonna get a quick poll. Raise your hand for me if on your website today, on your new vehicles, you list MSRP as your pricing. Is the only pricing field that you display? Okay, all right, so it looks like about maybe 10% of the audience. Raise your hand if it's MSRP and internet price that you display on your website. Okay, and most of us do that for transparency purposes, maybe to build some trust, maybe we think it'll increase conversion. So we wanted to do a test to decide, was MSRP only going to do a higher conversion rate or MSRP internet price? So we, our control was MSRP only. We ran a split test, and we found that the control versus variation A, which was MSRP and internet price, we saw a 13% lift in conversion when we actually gave the internet price in addition to MSRP. And if you think about it, that's not that, you know, um, you know, uh, mind-blowing because you're being a little more transparent here, you're giving a little more information, but on the other hand, you know, if you just give MSRP, you're giving their person a reason to want to contact you. Anyway, what we identified was MSRP and internet price displaying these two fields was the most effective way of merchandising your price. But then we decided to look inside the brain. Then we decided to figure what would the reptilian brain look at this and what would they be concerned with? So we decided to optimize this without changing the price at all, okay? We are not lowering the price, we're just optimizing the way we display price. And here's what we came up with in our test. All right, there are some serious psychological principles at play here. I'm gonna go through them very quickly. What we've done is we've increased the font size of the MSRP price. By increasing the font size, making the numbers look larger, we've made the brain perceive this price to be higher. By reducing the font size of the internet price, we made the brain recognize this price to be lower. We've also added a comma on the MSRP and dot zero zero to the end of the MSRP. On the internet price, the price we want to make appear small, we've removed that dot zero zero, and we also kept the comma because we, we, we recognized that that didn't really make much of a difference, it was harder to read without it. But we did end it in a 99 as opposed to zero zero. And there's neuromarketing principles that say the 99s, when you see them all over the place, these are actual scientific reasons for this. So we re reduced this price by one penny, excuse me. But the focal point here is only what the reptilian mind is most concerned about. It's the difference between the two. It's the price, it's the savings that concerns them. So by making the biggest focal point here, the difference between these two numbers, we were able to achieve a 28% lift as opposed to a 13% lift when we didn't optimize those prices using these psychological principles. Okay, so you don't have to always lower your prices or give discounts off to lift conversion. You can just change the way you display this content and this information. Here's one that I was very uh, intrigued with, and this is something that's happening newer. It's not a test that I've conducted. This has been done by some national automotive portals. They've taken your standard lead capture form you know, this is what you would see on any standard website. And they basically kind of turned it around. And this, is, this has been done through Vast.com, Yahoo Autos, um, and uh, LemonFree.com. So these are sites that get over a million uniques per month 
are testing this. What they've done here, we call this a natural language form. They've taken your traditional automotive website form and they've added natural language to it. Hello, my name is Amir you know, Rezvani, and I'm writing to you today to learn more about the 2008 Toyota Avalon that you've got listed for $18.99. My email address is this. It reminds me of Mad Libs. Remember the Mad Libs forms where you inserted adjectives and nouns? And anyway, so I've read research from these um, national portals that have shown a lift of 25% when they change to this. And if you go to these sites right now, Lemon Free or, or Vast.com, these, these major portals, this is how all their lead forms are. So don't you think if an automotive portal, which is very similar to a dealership website, can see a 25% lift by doing this, that maybe on the dealer level, this would be something worth testing? There's no other way for you to find out whether this works or not unless you commit to conducting two tests per month, go buy a cheap A-B testing software, plug it into your website platform, and try to take advantage of these same type of opportunities. So I haven't tested that yet. It's something I'm very excited to do. But um, all right, here's something that I have tested. This is basic um, vehicle details page on one of our dealership platforms. Uh, it performs very well. But I thought that there's a lot more that can be done here. The number one concern I had with this page is I saw a lot of clutter. There wasn't a lot of clarity. There's a lot of competing calls to action. You've got buttons all up and down this left-hand side. You know, you've got this big trade evaluation icon across the top. You've got vehicle reviews down here. There's a lot going on. And what we wanted to do is find out, rather than keep adding things to our vehicle details page on our website, what if we start removing things little by little and get them a more clear, concise vehicle details page? So we redesigned it, we removed some of the distraction, we emphasized the calls to action. You see I have a red call to action there. This was after I tested and found that a different color was more effective. So by kind of making the emphasis and the focal point be the, the vehicle photo and the call to action, and I optimized the pricing there, you see the MSRP and the internet price, by making all these changes that we've learned along the way through making these small incremental changes, we were able to take the performance of this page from this design to this design and get a 21% lift in lead volume. Not by adding anything, but by removing stuff. So less is more when it comes to uh, automotive website conversion, in my opinion. Um, Credit application forms, these are one of the areas where we see huge, huge lifts every single time. If you haven't already optimized your credit app, this is one of the easiest ones. This is a long form credit application. It comes standard with most website package that you buy. Don't just accept it because it came out of the box that way. Optimize it. There's no headline here. The call to action's at the bottom. It's weak. It says, some, you know, there's so much you can do. So we've taken this form, we've broken it into multiple steps, we add a headline, get pre-approved in seconds, it's fast, easy, and secure. Basically what we've done is taken this long form and broken it up into four different parts. So once you get the name, email address, and phone number, the lead has been captured. Once you skip to the next step, if the person drops off or doesn't want to give you their social, or doesn't want to give you their employment information, you've already got their information. You can follow up and get the rest of the information. So we added a, a, a secure, um, seal here to ensure that they know that the website is encrypted and it's a secure server. Um, so by simply, you can buy a third party plugin like this if you don't want to redesign your own credit application, but it's very simple to do. Add a headline, break it up into multiple parts, add a secure symbol, and we got 300% lift. So if you have the long form credit application, highly, highly encourage you to get rid of it and break it down into multiple steps. All right, so here's a very nicely designed vehicle details page. Again, oh, this is, I'm sorry, not a vehicle details page. This is a, a new car quote form, all right? It looks pretty good. It's got nice colors, it's got a picture, it's got price, it's got comments. But based on what we've talked about so far, can you just, can anyone just looking at this off the top of your head tell me what we could do to optimize this? Okay, so we've got some unnecessary fields. We don't really need time zone or best time to contact, so that's an obvious one. Anything else you would do? The picture, make it a little bit bigger. You, now remember, they've already landed on the VDP, so they're seeing the big picture. Now they're just, okay, yep. We don't, yeah, we decided that was not the best. Um, what, what I thought is, A, this is competing calls to action. 
They've already clicked on a button to request more info. They've already landed on the VDP. So giving them the opportunity to request a test drive, get a quote, make an offer, these are all distractions. They don't need to be here. All you want them to do is fill out this form and hit this button. Go moving on to other calls to action at this phase of the game, I think, is a distraction. Um, we said minimize these form fields. Request more info. Is that the most compelling call to action that you could think of? I mean, there's probably something more exciting you could do than that. So what we tried to come up with was request a sale price. We thought there's a little bit more urgency in that. See if this vehicle qualifies for any lower, you know, is it a demo? Is it maybe a uh, overage unit? So I put a headline there, request a sale price and a subheadline in there. We've got only the fields that we need and your calls to action should really um, reinforce what your headline is. So if your headline is request a sale price, your call to action should be get your sale price, not submit. Submit is not a good call to action. Nobody wants to submit to anything, all right? And again, remove the distraction, and um, that was a pretty successful test there. All right, this was the same one that we looked at before. It was that same Nissan store. See, they have a lot going on here, all this different activity and, and different third-party plugins. Well, one thing they did recently, this was about a year ago, is they were testing the idea of pulling in customer reviews onto their vehicle details page. Okay, so what you see right here is a feed directly from Dealerator that's displaying this dealership's 10 most um, recent reviews that were positive, and it scrolls right here. So we decided to give that a test, and what we found was it was very effective when you scrolled the reviews, but then we tested having video and saw that the, the results went up dramatically. So if you're gonna take valuable real estate on your website and you're gonna shoot customer reviews or testimonials, this would be a really good place to display them. And if you could make them model specific, you would be even more impactful, okay? So think about the possibility of testing reviews on your vehicle detail page. And then if it works, think about going to the next step and putting actual videos on your, on your vehicle details page. When he went from having reviews that were text-based to video-based, he saw a 42% lift. All right, so videos are very powerful. Do not have the videos play automatically, though. All right, here's something we've noticed that many, many of you in this room are probably guilty of. And again, I'm not saying that you should go home and automatically change your strategy as it pertains to this. I'm saying I've done some tests personally on a large scale and I consistently am seeing declining results when dealers choose to rotate multiple banners on their homepage. Does anyone here have multiple banners scrolling on their homepage? Okay, that's not, you would think, hey, I've got 0% on you know, five different models, why don't I rotate Camry, Corolla, you know, and, and, and hope that when the consumer lands on my website, the one that he's interested in happens to be scrolling at that very instant. Well, it's not effective, it's a distraction. It actually reduces the number of inventory searches that are conducted when you start rotating multiple banners. What I recommend that you do is consider using some behavioral intelligence and actually display the offer that's most likely relevant to that consumer. And what I mean by that is if you, the consumer comes from Google and types in Toyota Camry for sale in Orlando. Well, Google will tell you that Toyota Camry were keywords this customer used, and then you can have your website display the 0% on the Camry to that customer, and the next customer who's searching for a Corolla display that one offer to that customer. You see how you're using information from Google to display a personalized, more relevant experience, not just hoping that you catch that customer. Um, through their, uh, uh, that you catch the right vehicle that they are interested in. So there was actually a 27% lift in inventory searches when we stopped scrolling so many different offers and just chose one. So what I would recommend is that you have a banner that's applicable to most people that you would use in that situation. You would have banners that are applicable to people that indicate what model they're interested in. You'd have one that's service related and you would rotate these based upon any 
data that you had that indicated interest in one or the other. So the rotating ones are the more distracting. Or run one, have one, you know, visitor A see this offer, visitor B see that offer, visitor C see that offer. Rotating through multiple offers isn't the, the best user experience we found. Yep. That was using the behavioral. So that person put Armada in the search results and it showed the Armada offer. And that technology is very easy to do. I mean, it's Google supplies that information willingly and you can just render the appropriate banner when the customer lands on your site. Okay, so here's what I was talking about before. Here's your just average homepage that has, you know, the way you would go into an inventory search on this page here is you'd have to mouse over new vehicles or pre-owned vehicles, go into inventory search, and then conduct a search. Or you would mouse over one of these images and maybe get in that way. What we found through the help of our partners at Datium is by simply adding a search box widget to the left-hand side of your home page, you would see a 36% lift in inventory searches. So get, make it easy for consumers to get to your site and once they're there, they're there for inventory, give them the opportunity to go straight into it. They've also tested, the guys at Datium, the impact of what happens if you move that search box from the left side to the right side. I don't remember the exact number, and I don't know if anyone from Datium is in this presentation, but there was a huge lift from just going from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So make sure you have an inventory search box, and make sure it's on the left-hand side, and you'll get a lot more people into your inventory searches. But first test it, and make sure that applies to your site, to your visitors. And the, thing, the reason why I'm saying it, so if you do a lot of paid search, then results can be different. If you're in a rural area versus a metro area, results can be different. If you're selling import versus domestic, all of these things apply. So there's no way you could look at this slide and determine that by just moving it from the left to the right, 100% of the time, it's gonna be applicable on 100% of the sites. There's been huge variations that we've seen, and fortunately, you're gonna to have to do some of the legwork on your own and actually test these, but these are some great places to start testing. All right, one thing that I like to do is I like to use a community of conversion optimization experts. I like to use a community of web design experts. We all use a tool called 5secondtest.com. Have anybody heard of that? It's a great tool. You can just um, you know, design a home page or update your home page or create a landing page, and you submit it to 5secondtest.com, and within five minutes, you get all this feedback from a community of designers and people out there that basically look at your page for five seconds and then the page disappears and then you ask the community three questions and based upon their answers to those three questions you can determine the potential impact or effectiveness of that page before you spend a lot of money marketing it. So what I want to do is do a five second test with you. I'm going to flash up a microsite for five seconds I'm going to take it away and ask you a few questions, and based upon your feedback, we'll determine if this is a potentially an effective site or not. Ready? Okay. What do you remember? Service. Okay. Okay. What can you do on that site? There was one main call to action, and if what's that? There was that, yeah. But the point is that the, the site has one main attended um, you know, thing for consumers to do, and if that's not very obvious within five seconds, then that site's probably a little too busy. Um, and then obviously, who's the site attended for? Service customers, and I'll go back to it real quick. So schedule service is the main call to action on this website. And I think it's nicely designed and effectively placed, but what's happening is all these videos and all these other offers and everything else is taking a lot of attention away from the main call to action and it's losing its um, potential impact. So I would get, within five minutes, a bunch of responses and I could go back to those responses, those questions, and make some changes to this website before I uh, considered testing it. Okay. 
That's just a funny graphic. So what, the point of this is don't always assume that you know who your customers are. Don't think that certain things are obvious to people when they're not. Um, always design your sites with grandma in mind. If you actually have a grandma, consider her a great usability test case. And have her, come, have her sit down on your dealership website and ask her this one question, is the one I always use. If it's a Honda site or Toyota site or whatever, just find, request a quote on a certified used car. If she can't, if she doesn't know what certified used car is, if she can't find the way to how to request a quote on this particular vehicle, then you probably have a usability issue. All right, so we're gonna talk about some tools that you can use. We already mentioned some A-B test software. Um, but lead capture coupons are one really effective way that I've found to immediately have a really big impact on conversion. So if you have a website that's kind of a train wreck and you can't change, do anything about it or change it and you want to automatically see a big lift in conversion, what I recommend is launching something like this on your homepage. It doesn't matter what the offer is. It could be off the price, sale of a vehicle, off your trade, or something like this. But basically what this does is it kind of interrupts the user experience. You know, it launches. It gives you the option to save $500 on your trade-in. You click on it. It launches a window. This is not a pop-up, but it behaves much like pop-ups do. Um, I know a lot of people find them to be very annoying and intrusive, and they're the, you know, the bane of your existence. But our data shows that you, the dealership owner or internet manager, find it annoying and intrusive because you're on your site all day long and it keeps popping up over and over again. But that customer who's trading in a vehicle at that moment at your store finds that to be really valuable and fills it out at a very high percentage. So if you want to immediately see a big lift, think about launching a coupon like this on your, web, on your homepage. Yeah? Just out of curiosity, for, for dealerships that don't have the ability to do that due to uh, you know, local restrictions, what, uh, have you found any other type of coupon that's effective? For instance, we can't say, you know, click on this coupon, you get an extra 500 every trade. Yes, I've done a lot of testing on the subject, and here's the bottom line. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. So I could actually not even give you, I could say, internet savings. Fill out this form to, for internet savings. Fill out this form for your guaranteed internet price. It could say anything, it doesn't matter. The fact is, it launches in front of the customer, they're in their subconscious frame of mind, that 95% of their brain, they're on your website, they're going to inventory, they're, they're following a, a repetitive pattern, and all of a sudden this thing launches and it interrupts their train of thought. And it takes them from the 95% of subconscious activity in their brain to the 5% of the activity where they pay attention, they gotta take action, they gotta close it or interact with it. And regardless of what you offer, some offers are better than others, but this by itself, the act of interrupting them is a very, very effective conversion technique. A controversial one, some completely swear by it and some people will use it regardless how many leads it generates for them. But we're not seeing high bounce rates because of this. We're not seeing a lot of complaints from customers and we're seeing huge lifts in conversion. So it's up to you. Homepage. So actually what you, what, what you should do is it's most effective when it launches behind your website. So there's called a pop under. So it doesn't really interrupt their user experience. Once they're done, they, they click away, it's the last thing that they see. And I found on the VDP, it's a distraction. Um, so those 26% leads uh, increase. Here's the tool I mentioned earlier. If you're not ready to spend any money just yet, Try Google's, and then if you find that the functionality of Google is limited, you want to be able to do more and more, more interesting tests, try this one. Um, no coding, no, no anything. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I want to just open it up to some questions, and um, yes. Uh, So many of the manufacturers are very rigid and they're very um, not flexible to too many different add-ons. And you know, we, we typically tend to um, have dealers consider having that website 
to be compliant and maybe building a second website where they don't have as many restrictions on them and being able to do some tests. And then once they had to test on that website, they can go back to their OEM and say, hey, here we found that if you consider letting us do this, we'll have a lot more conversion, a lot better user experience. That's really the only way around that. But again, small things. You know, the, even the Chrysler sites will let you change call to actions. They'll let you change text and button sizes and button colors. You don't have to get you know, too dramatic. Yeah? Yep. It has been tested um, extensively, and if you talk to companies like Unity Works and some of these people who that's what they do for a living is just vehicle-based walk-around videos, they have pretty good data that I'm, I'm, I'm privy to that shows a significant increase in engagement and time on website uh, and um, SEO performance. Now, tying that performance into direct vehicle conversions, you need to get a little bit more strategic and relevant rather than just showing you know, a video of a used car walk around. That's when you need to you know, get a testimonial of someone who bought that model from that dealership, right. and that's when you start seeing the real so lifts and conversion. Is, it's not just the fact that it's on page. Right. Not... But it will increase your micro conversions. And you increase your micro conversions, inevitably you increase your macro conversions. So it's a good place to start. Well, the, the flip side of that, though, is with any of these, uh, of these switch tests, mm -hmm. what kind of iteration cycles are we typically looking at? It all depends on how much traffic your site gets. If you get 4,000 visitors, it may take you a month. If you get 40,000 visitors, you could do it in three days. But the good thing is the software will take care of all of that for you. Yeah? What is some of the tools of the, for the, uh, uh, the Google thing you were talking about, where they come to Google and your website knows what their search terms were? That, that's just technology your website provider needs to offer. I will speak to you in my booth. <laughs> but, um, Come here real quick. Your, yep. your three dealers you had were Holly Kia, Ideal Nissan, I missed the third one. Scott Clark Toyota. And again, so these, these websites are all doing A-B testing. So uh, you may come to the website one time and see one version, and you come back the next time and something's completely different. How often should you do the A-B testing? Let's say I find green colors work mm -hmm. better. Six months later, should I try that again? And you, no. You if it's, once it's, yeah. Once you, determine which works But it may work better on your home page, and then it may not work better on your VDP. So as long as you test it on different pages and stuff. recommend doing piece by piece? Yes. Deal with your home page first, yep. find out what works. Three, 80 percent, 90 percent of your traffic only visits three pages on your website. Home page, search results page, and VDP. Spend all your optimization efforts on those three pages, and you will get all the most bang for your buck. All right. Amir. Yes. The, the, uh, the chat box mm -hmm. that wanders all around yep. as soon as they log on to mm -hmm. the site, right? Yep. Are you, so, it, so I'm going to do all this work and I'm going I'm to have this, this, this banner that's not rotating, that's, that's tied into the keyword that drove them there. Right. They want to see a Camry and then all yep. of a sudden, boom, this thing is sitting on. So it, it's intrusive, it's annoying, it's much like the pop-up, but every single test we've ever conducted it outperforms any static icon that you could ever create because it has that interruption effect to the consumer. So, so if don't you, move it off to the right. You can have as, as just around. yeah. Let I mean do, with within reason. Let it drop from the sky one time. Let it wander one time. Once they close it, it should be gone for good. But if you just put a static chat icon on the top right hand side of your page, it'll never get as many click throughs as the one that floats on your website and kind of interrupts your natural flow of... Um, and can we put a tracking code on that to see what yeah. drove them there? Absolutely. Which chat software do you use? Active Engage. They have all that. Yeah. And they're here, and, you, and then you can pass that data to us or your website provider, and that'll be really good information for us to be able to go back and... Um, I love Somerville. Oh, you do? Love oh, okay. Love He'll be happy to hear that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for helping us. Oh, oh sure. Great. Thank you so much. Have you heard of any web companies not wanting to put the visual optimizer code on the site? Do I have to go to them to put that code on? Most of them, yes, but I don't know anybody, you know, even my biggest competitors, that would not want to give you the ability to you know, improve your user experience. I mean, that would be a big red flag to me. Sure. So I would have to go to them to get that code put on. 
it depends who your provider is. You would not have, we have a, a, an, like on our platform is an area that says add custom code, you can put it on yourself, but I know some of my competitors, you just email it to support. Thank you. Does your uh, A-B testing, does that, does that uh, technology work on any code base? It doesn't, does yeah. work? because we actually uh, have designed we host our own website internally, so that's just something. Yeah, it's all client side. So basically that, that software is gonna take a picture of your website okay. and it's going to allow you to manipulate the website as though it's live on your site, but it's actually on the software provider's okay. end. How do you do that with, uh, like you were doing the test between a slide that slid, you know, it had two or three slides, mm -hmm. and then one that was stationary. Can yep. you do that, a, that kind of A-B yeah. testing? Real simple. So version A, you allow them to rotate. Version B, you just show one static one. So 50% of your customers will come to the website and see rotating offers. 50% will just see a static offer. And it's all done in the software. It's all done in the software. Okay. And for 50 bucks a month if you use the, uh, the Indian company and free if you want to use Google. And if you don't want to mess with it, I'll be happy to uh, be your website provider and do it all for you. Is this going to be available for the presentation? Yes, the yes, yes. If you want to um, leave me your card, I'll email you the presentation. Please. Anybody? If anybody wants to copy the presentation, it thank you so super. much. I appreciate it. Super. Thank you so much. I'll get them to you by Monday. Perfect. How do you account for the environmental variables that you can't necessarily uh, control when you're doing your AP testing? Like, for example, you can't necessarily tell uh, if something's being effective as far as conversion rate based on the inventory that's being displayed on the website at a given time frame. So, I mean, or, or even seasonality. So right, so that's, that's why it's... it's you know, a real time, 50% of the people today will see this version, 50% will see that version. So if you make one slight variation to one version, it'll be that same season, that same time, and the system will tell you that based upon your total volume of visitors, the ones that saw this version behave this way, the ones that saw ver that version behave that way. Yeah, right, but then next week your conversion is down, maybe something changes you made it no longer. You have to hit statistical significance before the system tells you you have a successful test. So in your case, it may take, in, in that particular instance, it may take a month before you reach that. I understand, I understand statistical significance, but just when you're thinking about the environmental variables, I mean, I understand when you get 50% of the traffic more. Right. I mean, does that uh, software also allow you to do, say, targeted testing for a separate group and then say, you know, look, send it to 10% here and 10% there for that one and then yeah. put the one line? Yeah, you can. Um, Somebody that, if you don't mind? Sure, we will do. If you come by my booth, I'll give you a, a demonstration of it. What would be the most informative? 407. Thanks. It was the most informative and entertaining uh, session I've seen in on by a long shot. Thank you so much. Very, very I mean, so much to me. Excellent. I'm going to keep giving it year after year until... My first time here. So. Okay, great.